Uh, okay, so this is a little bit more exciting than the last section. We're going to uh, learn about isosceles and equilateral triangles in this lesson. Um, so the first uh, thing, I assume you know what an isosceles triangle is. It's one with uh, two congruent sides. Um, and so we get a little if and only if um, theorem here right off the bat, and that is that uh, if you have an isosceles triangle, then the two, uh, these are called base angles, are congruent. And if you have a triangle with two base angles congruent, then you've got yourself an isosceles triangle. Um, so now we can do some algebra with this, so that's always fun. Um, so this question says, what is the value of x? Well, we know this is an isosceles triangle. These two sides are the congruent sides, so that means that these two angles are the congruent angles. So those two angles add up to 56 degrees, which leaves us, we know that there's uh, 180 degrees in a triangle altogether. So if we subtract that off, then that means that there's 124 degrees left for this guy right here, which I believe is called like the vertex angle or something like that. So that means that um, 5x plus 9 equals 124. So we can solve that for x uh, very easily. Um, subtract 9 from both sides. It gives us, uh, what, 115. Uh, and then divide both sides by 5, and you get uh, 23. Okay, or we can do uh, this guy here. Uh, since these two sides are congruent, that means these two angles are congruent. So we know that negative 4x plus 9 equals 8x minus 3. So I'm going to get my x's over here so that I can stay positive, get my numbers over there. Uh, so in this case, x just equals... Uh, 1. Let's check that. Plug 1 in there, I get 5. Ooh, that's not a 5 degree angle, but I guess not drawn to scale. Um, okay, uh, then like I said, we can do the opposite. If we know that these two uh, base angles are congruent, then I know that this side and this side are congruent. So that means that x plus 20 equals 8x over 3. So sad but true, nobody likes fractions, so I'm going to get rid of this fraction by multiplying both sides by 3. So if I take this side and multiply it by 3, I get uh, 3x plus 60. And if I take this side and multiply it by 3, uh, then the 3's cancel, and I get uh, 8x. So that means 5x equals... Uh, 60, so x equals 12. That, however, is not what the question asks us for. It says, what are the lengths of all three sides? So I have to take that and plug it in. So if I plug that into this easy one first, then that means PR has a length of uh, 32. I could be lazy and just assume that RQ is going to have the uh, same length, but I might as well check my work. So if I plug 12 into there, 8 times 12 is 96, and 96 divided by 3 is in fact 32, as we were hoping for. And then side PQ, well, this has no relationship to the lengths of those sides, I have to plug that in, and that would give me uh, 60, I believe. 60, 72, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so then uh, you could, if you wanted to, try this guy right here. You could pause the video and do that real quick. Uh, I think that that comes out to be um, a decimal, perhaps. Um, you can check my work, but I think that x is 1.5. That'd be, uh, make that 6 plus 5 is 11, and then... 8 times 1.5 is 12, minus 1, yeah, is 11, so, and then you can plug that in there and find the third side, so that's super duper fun. Um, okay, one thing that you can do with uh, isosceles triangles is you can uh, draw 
align. Uh, yeah, it is called the vertex angle. Yay. Um, you can draw, you can cut this vertex angle in half um, and draw a line straight down from there. And um, this theorem tells us that if you do that, um, then this angle is going to be perpendicular and it's going to uh, bisect these two sides. And that's pretty intuitive thing. Um, they probably prove it uh, some other time. All right, so now we can take a shape like this. What are we trying to find? Well, we'll just find everything. And we can find everything that we want on the triangle. So if this is 31 degrees, then this is also 31 degrees. If this is 4, then this is 4. Uh, this, of course, is 90. These have to add up to 180. So that means this guy right here is 59. And this person is also 50. Um, I don't think then we can find the length of this or the length of these, though. Um, so, could be wrong. Let's see if they ask us to find those. P, S, and R, S. Do they ask? They do. Uh, nope, they do not. Okay. Um, all right, then equilateral triangles, of course, is uh, a triangle with all the sides the same. And this uh, idea is that if all the sides are the same, then all the angles have to be the same also. And uh, fun five side note, if all of the sides are, or I'm sorry, if all the angles are the same, um, then each one of those angles has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so this is an equilateral triangle. Angle C, B, D is 130 degrees. Um, what is the measure of B, A, D? Um, okay, so you know that since this is an equilateral triangle, let me make this easier to see, maybe. Um, since this is an equilateral triangle, that means this is uh, 60 degrees. Uh, and then it tells you that that entire angle is 130, so that means that this is 70. This is kind of a fun problem. Uh, then this guy right here is an isosceles triangle, so that means that these two base angles are the same. So if that vertex angle is uh, 70 degrees, then that leaves us 110 degrees to share between these two angles right here, which means that each one of those is 55 degrees. Um, so don't be fooled. When I first looked at this problem, there was an immediate temptation to think that these two angles are the uh, same. But there's no reason that that would have to be the case because you could kind of visualize taking this side here and swinging it uh, back and forth and the side length would stay the same but the angle uh, would change. So there's nothing um, that makes these two have to be uh, congruent. So don't make any assumptions. Um, okay, so we can try another one of those. What is the measure of angle U? So we're going to dance around on this shape until we get all the way over here. Um, so this is an isosceles triangle with a vertex angle of 72. So 180 minus 72 leaves me uh, 108. That has to go uh, between these two angles. So that's 54 and that's 54. These two bad boys are a linear pair, so they have to add up to 180. So that means this angle is going to be 126. Um, so then that means that these two angles are the same because these two sides are the same. And since I got 186 so far there at the uh, vertex angle, or 126 I mean, that means that I have, what do you know, knew that already, 54 degrees to share between these two. So that means each one of them is 27 degrees. Okay. All right. And then you could maybe try this one on your own. Pause the video or whatever and work it out. Um, this is an equilateral triangle, so all of these are going to be 60 and this is a linear pair, so that means that guy is going to be 120. So there's 60 left for both of those, so that's 30. Love my writing, and that's uh, 30 also. All right, so there's some problems for you to work on relating to isosceles and equilateral triangles.